Hey everybody, Matt Green here, and this is episode two of Smart Talk, and we're gonna be talking about carbs, reducing joint inflammation, getting more sleep at night, and eating wheat. So things have been great here. We've been extremely busy working with new members and, and helping people transform their lives and and uh, things have been good. It's been, you know, it's finally been warming up here. Outside it's been, you know, over the past winter, if you had a cold winter, it's been, it was, it got even to some points down to negative 15 and negative 20, which is pretty crazy. It was, it was like one of those winters that, uh, winters from the old times when it was a lot colder, it seems like back then, and it was one of those winters where it was extremely cold this season. And, you know, now for the next five days, it's, it's uh, supposed to be in the 80s for all five days, so that's nice. It's definitely a, a big change around here, so it's something to look forward to. But yeah, we've been very busy here working on, you know, answering questions that uh, members have and, you know, helping sign new members up to improve their life and health too. So it's been real busy here, and I'm excited for today's episode. We got a, a lot of great, great questions that were asked, and and today's five questions are pretty good. I think you'll get a lot of great information out of, out of them, and you know I think they'll they'll help you out tremendously. So uh, yeah, let's get into let's get into the questions and get this thing rolling. Betty asks, I think all carbs on the nutrition label are bad carbs. Do any list good carbs? Hey Betty, great question. And not all carbs are bad carbs. There's definitely good carbs, and some of the good carbs, as an example, would be quinoa. They have, quinoa has a lot of carbs in it, but it also has a lot of fiber. So the, carbo, the carbs that are absorbed into your body are slowly absorbed, which is good. And then also vegetables, all vegetables are carbohydrates, but they have a lot of fiber, which is great. And it slows down the absorption of the you know, carbs into our, our body. And something that you want to really watch out for is just avoiding processed carbs because they tend to be really processed. They contain very little fiber, if any at all, and they get quickly absorbed into our bloodstream, which can you know cause weight gain. It can cause our energy levels to crash you know after a short time after we've eaten the processed carb. So it's definitely something you want to be careful with. So on the label, it's just going to say carbs, but you're not going to be able to differentiate good versus bad. It's just going to be by the type of food that you're eating and you know whether there's an ingredients list attached to the food that you're eating. And as I was saying, the quinoa would be great. All vegetables are fairly good, except you know some on the real starchy side. You may want to avoid a little bit like potatoes and that, but uh, definitely. I mean, you want to stick to the good carbs. They're they're good to eat, and they contain a lot of fiber, which can they can uh, cleanse our digestive tracts, which is also great as well. And yeah, you just want to make sure you stay away from the bad carbs. And it's not necessarily shown on the label, but you can tell by the type of food it is and the ingredients that are in the food. So something like a breakfast cereal that has a lot of carbs in it but there's very little fiber in it and there's a ton of sugar so that's not going to be not going to be good for you so you just want to stick to the one ingredient foods that have lots of fiber that uh, that are carbs so like vegetables quinoa and and those are good things to to eat on a regular basis diana asks i already have inflammation in my joints is there something I can do just starting this program that will minimize that as I begin? Hey Diana, great question. And you're going to see huge benefits just by starting the plan. There's nothing special that you have to do. You just have to follow the foods that we recommend and drink lots of water. And that alone is going to help you reduce joint pain, swelling, and inflammation fairly quickly. And you're gonna see results within the first seven days. You're gonna notice that your energy levels are going to increase and you're going to see that your weight is going to decline. And if you don't see any initial pounds coming off in the first week, if you have to lose weight in the first place, I mean, some people just want to be healthier and reduce inflammation. So if weight loss is one of your goals, then you should see weight loss within the first week by following the meal plans. And if you don't see weight loss, you should see inches being taken off of your waistline as well if you're not seeing the initial pounds coming off right away. 
but uh, it's definitely going to help you reduce the body fat on your body and help you become more leaner and you're just going to feel a whole lot better. So I'm looking forward to seeing how everything works out and keep us posted. Linda asks, do you have menus in book form and recipes? Great question, Linda. And yes, the whole program is actually in book form as well. So if you go over to the manual section, you'll see on the, the left side, if you scroll down the page a little bit, you'll see that the there's an option for purchasing a book and, and that will include the meal plans, all the shopping lists. You'll have you know some recipes in there as well. It'll also contain the complete manual. We'll also have goal setting guides, measurement forms, and and a lot of stuff. I mean, pretty much everything in the members area that's in writing is in that book. So the whole program's in there, and it's definitely a great thing to have. It's nice to have the book if you want to have it in your kitchen with you instead of having to always refer to the computer. It's definitely something that that would be worth having if you if you don't have a tablet either because. You can also access Slim Down Smart on your tablet too, which is nice. But definitely the book is nice to have. It's it's nice to have in front of you and it can it can make things easier for you. So we definitely do have it and it's just in the manual section of Slim Down Smart. Barb asks, in the introductory video, you talked about staying away from gluten, but later suggest Ezekiel bread, which though sprouted, I think contains gluten. I like Ezekiel products, but my husband has celiac disease. Should we substitute gluten-free items, or are there components of the Ezekiel bread that are best for this program? Hey Barb, great question, and yeah, you're right. Typically, we don't recommend wheat bread or any crackers and uh, anything that has wheat or flour in it because it tends to cause weight gain and, and it can crash our energy levels, spike our blood sugar levels and cause weight gain. So there's a lot of problems with wheat and, and flours. So that's why we tend to avoid them. But with the Ezekiel bread, it's a little bit different. And the reason we recommend it is because it's a much healthier alternative to bread. And at the store you'll see breads have a lot of high fructose corn syrup, soybean oil, and they're really processed. But the Ezekiel bread, it doesn't have any added processed ingredients. It's a really healthy bread that you can eat. But if you have celiac disease, on the other hand, you said your husband had celiac disease, so he can't have it at all because he's going to have a reaction to gluten, but you could have it since you don't have celiac disease, and that would be fine to eat every once in a while if you wanted to. It's definitely not required, but we have some members that like to eat bread a lot, and so that's what we recommend to them because it's a much healthier version of bread, but definitely not required. So if you're fine without eating without eating bread, then I would definitely just avoid the Ezekiel bread. I mean, me personally, I don't have celiac disease, and I pretty much just avoid bread altogether. I don't eat any crackers unless it's uh, the Mary's Gone crackers, which we recommend. And I'll have maybe an Ezekiel tortilla a couple times a month if I make you know, a meal with it, but that's about it. So I don't have any bread at all. And you don't have to either, but it's pretty much just for the people that want an alternative to bread because they're used to having it you know for for every day for lunch they have a sandwich and you know it can be a lot for those types of people to eliminate bread altogether so that's why we recommend Ezekiel bread for the people that you know that can't just cut their addiction to bread and they slowly have to wean themselves off and this is just a much healthier switch that they can make right away to start seeing results so that's my answer to the question you really don't need to have Ezekiel bread your husband can't have it at all because he has celiac disease and and uh, yeah that's about it so if you want to incorporate Ezekiel bread it's totally up to you and you can also if you don't want the Ezekiel bread if it's charted out on the meal plans to have it you can also change the meal and swap it out for a different meal that you like on the meal plans and and that would be fine too so hopefully that answers your question Kathy asks I'm a 64-year-old diabetic with celiac disease and arthritis. I only sleep three to four hours a night. I go to sleep quickly, but I can't stay asleep. Any tips? Hey, Kathy, great question. And definitely getting a lot of sleep at night is really beneficial. And what we recommend is about seven to eight hours of sleep. That's going to give you the best results, and it's going to help reduce joint pain, inflammation, and you know all the issues that it sounds like you've been running into 
So it's really important to get your sleep in. And sleeping is when our bodies repair themselves to help us feel energetic the, energetic the next day and really feel on top of our game. So it's important to get enough sleep throughout the day. So there's a couple tips that I have that I think can help you improve your sleep quality. And the first one would be increasing more activity and exercise into your routine. So I know with type 2 diabetes it can be hard to do any you know, intense workouts because it just it's just hard for people that have a little bit more weight that they're carrying around. So something that I would recommend that you can do is maybe go for a walk around your block before going to bed. Like if it's, you know, three hours before bed, if you go for a 15, 20, 30 minute walk, that would be really good. It would help tire your body out a little bit and it may help you sleep longer and more restfully. And then another thing that can prevent you from falling asleep or staying asleep is when, when you're watching TV or on the computer late at night or even reading an interesting book could keep you up at night too. So something I'd recommend is every, like the last hour before you go to bed would be just to sit and relax and, and kind, of, kind of tone down your mind a little bit and not do anything really interesting because if you're really interested in the thing that you're doing, it's going to be hard to fall asleep. So it's pretty much just relaxing for the last hour before you go to bed and staying away from any bright screens because if you're if you're in anything bright like a TV screen or a computer screen or a tablet screen it can actually stimulate stimulate your brain to want to stay awake longer versus if you're just kind of sitting and maybe just have a light on in the corner of your room or you're just sitting in your family room then that's going to be pretty low-key and the lights will be a little bit dimmer so your mind will be getting in that state of thinking okay it's going to be time to go to sleep soon so that's what I think is going to really help you improve your sleep quality and improve the the length of time that you're asleep so that's really what I would try and, and recommend to you to to see if you can improve your sleep quality and and uh, increase your energy and lower your inflammation so that's what I would recommend to, to start doing to to try out so the question of the day is how many hours of sleep are you guys getting every single night? Let me know in the comments section below. And also, make sure below this video you click on the orange button to submit your questions. And you guys are the ones that keep this show rolling, so if you keep submitting questions, we can keep doing episodes, and, and that would be great. So if you haven't submitted any questions yet, I encourage you to... to click the orange button below and really submit your questions. We want to help you out and help you improve your life and your health and, and uh, your, your whole lifestyle. So we're excited to help you out and you know submit your questions and also make sure you post how many hours a night you're sleeping and I'm curious to see what everyone has to say. So we'll talk to you guys soon in the next episode.